had a vision of heaven what these eyes they did see as i viewed way up yonder in that sweet eternity thought i entered that city and I stopped at the gate so anxious to enter. I could hardly wait. As I neared that city, Jesus stood at the door. Said, my child, enter in. You are safe forevermore. I walked all around to see who I could see, for I had so many loved ones (laughs) who had came ahead of me. Walked on a little farther, who is that I did see? Why, that's a little old lady. Who many times befriended me, helped me in my sickness, and in trouble a helping hand. Why, that's her there singing in that blessed angel band. Walked on a little farther, who is that I did see? Why, that's dad and mama who were just ahead of me. Well, I wonder if they'll know me. They've been gone for so long. With a smile they remember. Said, my child, you're welcome home. Well, I walked on a little farther. Who is that I did see? Why, that's the old beggar who sat up on the street. He looked so different sitting there around God's throne. I can still hear him singing while the ages roll on. Oh, yes. Over yonder (laughs) is a face I remember still. It's the old-fashioned preacher from the church up on the hill. With his Bible I still see him standing there so many times telling us about this heaven that someday I could call mine. But I must keep on walking. So many places yet to go. So many more faces that I am searching for. But I won't have to hurry I'll take all the time I need For I'm here to live forever Throughout eternity Praise the Lord, I'm glad I'm headed to a city (laughs) Where I won't have to be in a hurry I'm glad over in John chapter 14 If you got your Bibles, let's turn there for a minute I want to take you back and I want to just for a few moments of time, I want you to think about this place that's called heaven. I hope that we can paint a picture this morning. I've had many people say, I wonder what heaven's going to be like. I wish somebody would tell me what heaven may look like or what it's going to be like. Well, I hope this morning the Lord spoke to me this week. Get through this song right here, Vision of Heaven. And that's what I'm going to preach on this morning, the vision of heaven. I hope it'll help you this morning. I hope it'll bless your soul. Let's stand, if I can read it this morning, for the reading of God's Word. Hallelujah, He's good this morning. (laughs) Oh, Lord. 
John wrote down in his precious book in in John chapter 14, he said in verse 1, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I like this. I circled it in my Bible. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I circled it again. And prepare a place for you. I circled this next to. I will come again and receive you unto myself. That word, I circled it again. I am there. You may be also. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm filled up this morning. I'm glad I'm going to some place. Amen. I'm going to leave out of here for too long. I appreciate Brother Pendleton, young man of God here this morning. I want him to pray and ask a blessing over the message this morning. Yes, Lord. (laughs) Amen. You can be seated. Revelations chapter 21. Revelations chapter 21. Turn over there. If I could even tell you what Brother John saw. (laughs) Brother Earl, we ain't going to talk about it too much longer. We're going to be there. Amen. We ain't going to have to read about it much longer. It's going to be reality. Amen. Hallelujah. I got to thinking about my precious grandmother. I you know y'all got to meet her, but you that are born again, one day you will. She's already in, in heaven. She's already there. She used to pull us up as little children. Around the rocking chair and on the swing. I can remember sitting on the swing. Swinging back and forth. And she sang, I had a vision of heaven. And she sang that song that I just sung to you. I'd love to hear my mamma's voice ring. On that old porch, she'd sing that song. She'd clap her hands and say how good God was. She'd say, over yonder's a place I remember still. It's the old-fashioned preacher from the church up on the hill. Then she'd shout a little bit and raise her hand. And at that time, I was young, uh, born-again Christian, and I could even feel it. I'd see that withered old hand go up, and it'd run all over me. And we'd go down to the church house, and, and they would, them old preachers get to preaching, and, and they'd be about five or six of them preaching. It seemed like they'd preach for 30 hours, and they'd get up and preach, and I remember my grandmother, she'd get happy about halfway back. And she'd start clapping her hands, walking around the church, shaking the hands with the brother and saying how good God is. She said, he's been so good to me. Amen. And she'd shake this hand and that hand. And then she'd shout and say, Woo! How good God is. And she'd just keep on a walking around. Never bother them preachers. They'd keep right on preaching. Preaching out the Word of God. And the Holy Spirit would fall on the place. And the conviction power of God would fall on the place. Sinners get under conviction because they'd see God's people happy in the Lord. They'd hear the Word of God. And they'd run to an old-fashioned altar and get born again. But I'll tell you, this day of time, it's got old-fashioned. People don't want to hear it. But I'll tell you one thing. This preacher right here is going to search out the old path. Amen. And when I find them, I'm walking there in. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I ain't talking about the old time way. I'm talking about the way. Amen. We need to follow the Lord in the days that we are living while breath is in our body. We need to follow Him and honor Him. But He's told us about this place that my grandmother talked about. My daddy uh, talked about. My family members that's done gone on and yours that's done gone on. They talked about this place. They shouted about this place. They was excited about this place. And they finally reached this place that I'm trying to get to. Amen. I'm not working my way to heaven. I've already got my ticket. I'm just waiting for the call. Amen. (laughs) There ain't nothing that I can do to earn it. There ain't nothing I can do to keep it. I'm glad I'm hid in His. He's mine and I'm His. And I'm on my way to this place. Amen. That the Bible talks about here in Revelation chapter 21. John described it in verse 10. And he said, And He carried me away in the Spirit. 
to a great high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God and her light was like and unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And the walls, listen, listen to me today. And it had a great wall and it was high and they had, had 12 gates and at the gates were 12 angels and the names were written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Listen to me, church, he's going to call one day. He talked about it over there in Thess- uh, over in uh, Thessalonians. He talked about, he said that on the east there's three gates and on the north there's three gates and on the south there's three gates and on the west there are three gates what was he talking about in Thessalonians when he talked about calling the church up one day we're going to leave this earth and we're going to be called up to this place that's called heaven can you just imagine all four corners of the earth are going to hear the voice of God amen when his son steps out and says come up hither and everybody gets up out of the grave those that are dead in Christ are going to rise first We which are alive and remain are going to be called up together to meet them in the air. Amen. They'll be coming from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. We're all going to be gathered up going up to this place. And when we walk into that city, can you imagine? All the gates are open. Welcome home. Welcome home. Come on in. It's all ready for you. Come on in. Welcome home. Man, what a time that's going to be. Our minds can't even fathom what this is going to be like. But the Lord told me to tell you about this vision of heaven (laughs) that he gave John. And here we see these gates. In verse 14 he says, And the walls of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the name of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the walls thereof and the city, listen, length four square and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with a reed, 12,000 furlongs, the length and the breadth and the height of the, of it are what? The Bible says equal. You know what that, I broke these term, terminologies down here, these measurements down, and I may not have them dead on, but I think I'm pretty close. The Bible's talking about a furlong. A furlong is 220 yards. Or an eighth of a mile. If you add all of that up, and we talk about the circumference of the city, you're talking about 2,250,000 square foot, which would be the size of half of the United States is the size of the city of heaven is what it's going to be. Now he said there would be a new heaven and a new earth. Just the city itself would be like from Maine to Florida. 1,500 miles one way, this way, 1,500 miles that way, that way, that way, and that way is what the Bible talks about. That's a pretty big city, amen, where this country boy's going. <laughs> I love the country. I love country things. We, uh, Me and my wife, we love primitive things. We make primitive furniture. We like that rustic look. A lot of people like the modern looks and think we like the rustic look. I like those things. But I'll tell you what, when I start reading about heaven, I'll put all the rustic things aside because I'm headed to a city, amen, whose builder and maker is who? God. That's who it is. He talked about the walls. Let's read on. And he measured the walls thereof a hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measurement of a man, that is, of an angel. And the building of the walls of it were of jasper, and the city was pure gold, likened unto clear glass." Now you that are married in here, I hope that if you're here and you're a couple, you are married. If you ain't and you're living together, you need to get married. Amen. Amen. God ain't for this all shacking up stuff. This is free of charge from heaven this morning. If you're together and you're living together, you ought to be married. But let's get off that for a minute and talk about this gold for just a second. If you see this gold that's on my finger, this ring represents uh, this woman that I'm married to. I wore this ring so long you still see it on my finger. I take this ring off, there's no beginning, there's no end. That's just like God's love. 
<laughs> There's no beginning and no end to God's love. But this ring represents my commitment to her. Amen. But you can tell this morning, you can look at that ring and it looks yellow. That's why, because this gold right here, it's full of impurity. It's not pure this morning. If it was pure gold, it would be transparent. You wouldn't even be tell, be able to tell that I've got it in my fingers this morning. That's, that's what pure gold is. It's transparent. And he talked about this city, that it was like transparent glass the gold was. Can you imagine that this morning? A city made of gold. You say, you say, it sounds like something Hollywood come up with. I tell you what, the Lord come up with it long before Hollywood did. Hollywood's is fiction. God's is true this morning. We're headed to a true city. But he talked about these cubics here. And if you break a cubic down and you look at it, 144 cubics works out to 216 uh, foot thick. The walls are 216 foot thick of heaven. Why are they that thick? He just wanted to make them good for us. Amen. <laughs> I'm glad all these things that we hold precious on this side and we think we wear it around our hands, we wear it around our necks, and we go out and spend all these monies. I, uh, it took 30 years for me to buy my wife a ring that she's got on right now. I worked real hard to get that ring, paid a lot of money for it. But I'm glad that God has taken that stuff like that right there and used it as building materials in heaven. Amen. Something we hold precious here, he's using it as build materials there. Man, heaven's going to be a great place. Over there in 1 Corinthians, he said, Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. All the good things that God has in store for them. Amen? That love and serving. Man, he's got some things ready. Y'all ought to be running around this place this morning. You get to thinking about this place called, especially you gray herd folks, I'm getting right there with you. We're getting closer than anybody is right now. If we live in this life and die out in this life, now we could die today. You young people, we ain't got a promise of tomorrow. We could die today. You could die today. But I'm glad that I'm ready, amen. I hope you're ready this morning. Y'all realize it just yesterday, I was just 16 years old and I had the whole world in front of me. All these plans to do things. I've turned around here. I am 50 years old almost. And where did it all go? It went boom like that. Life went by that way. I got more, more days behind me than I do in front of me. That's the truth this morning. You young people probably got more days in front of you. You know, us older people don't have that like that. It makes heaven sweeter though. <laughs> you get to thinking about how close heaven is. And it gets better all the time. But let's read on. Verse 19, and he said, And the foundations of the walls of the city were garnished with all manners of precious stones. The first was a jasper. The second was a sapphire. The third was a chalcedony. The fourth was an emerald. And the fifth was a sardonyx. The sixth was a sardonyx. And the seventh was a crystal light. The, seventh, or the eighth was a barrel. And the ninth a topaz. Tenth, a chrysophagus. The eleventh was an adjacent. And the twelfth was an amethyst. I ain't even seen half of those stones. I've only seen some of them in pictures. Some of them I've never seen. That's a part of that scripture he's talking about. Eyes have not seen. There's going to be things that we've never seen before. In verse 21 he says, And the, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls, and ever several gates were as of one pearl. And the streets of the city were pure gold, as it were transparent glass. That's where I was talking about kicking up gold dust a few weeks ago, amen. I'm going to be running as hard as I can run when I get to heaven. How do you know? I don't know, but I'll tell you what, that's what I feel like right now. Just run as hard as I can run. I ain't never really let go on you guys one of these days. You're going to see it. You'll say, my pastor has lost his mind. I love it. I love to get happy for the Lord. I'll tell you this, I was over in, in the Hot Springs, uh, North Carolina preaching one night and God got in a place and the pastor had been in a car wreck and he's all mangled up. He couldn't do nothing anymore and he, all he could do was sit in a wheelchair and cry and barely raise his hands to worship and they were still honoring the man of God. 
Even the shape he was in, they'd bring him in the wheelchair and set him there. And when we was having service and we were singing and, and they wanted me to preach that night, and the more we sung, the happier I got watching him trying to worship, raise that little hand up and it's shaking all over and them tears are running down. And I thought about all those years he paid the way for that church and, and for, the, for the Lord to work in those people. Now it was their turn to help their pastor and to love on them. And they were doing that and were honoring him. Boy, it got all over me that night. And I got to thinking about the blessings of God and how good God is. And I got beside myself and there's some Kleenex boxes on the table. And I grabbed those Kleenex boxes and I got them up and about beat them all to pieces. I, they was all over the place the time I got done. And uh, they had to apologize to the church because I tore things up. But I get excited when it comes to serving God. Amen. I don't understand all that hollering and screaming. Well, if you'll get hooked up, you may holler and scream just a little bit. Amen. He's wild. You better believe I'm wild. I'm wild for the Lord. Amen. I don't, next big ball game, big Virginia Tech ball game, I'm going to go hide out and watch Aaron down there. <laughs> Woo! Go boys! I'm going to walk around and say, hey, what's going on? I don't see none of that down at the church house. <laughs> he knows I'm just pecking on him. You get get a good old uh, Tennessee ball game going. You look around. Brother Greg's up in the seat going, Go, boys, go! <laughs> Come on now. But we get excited about ball games and all these different things. Why can't we get excited for the Lord? Right. About this place that we're going Amen. called heaven. Yeah. I'll tell you why. We've got complacent. With what we've heard, what we've heard preached. Brother Cole done so good this morning. Singing, bless my heart. And I thought, Lord, he's right on track <laughs> with my message. He, I hadn't talked to him and he hadn't talked to me. That's the way God works. God know that we needed Brother Cole to come by today and bless us with these songs. I appreciate him being obedient to honor God. Brother, keep doing what you're doing. I know you've probably been doing it a long time. Keep on doing it. And when they tell you they don't want you, come to Vickers. We'll want you. We'll take you all we got. They don't want you in West Virginia. Come on down to Virginia. We'll take you down here. Amen. But we love, we love the brother and the sister and those that serve God. We love you today. But we want to tell you that God loves you. And all these precious stones he's talking about. And how he's doing it. But look at verse 23. And the city had no, no need of sun, neither of a moon. Listen, of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. The Lamb is the light thereof, is what the Bible says. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut by day, for there shall be no night there. Amen. There ain't going to be no night there. We ain't going to have to take no more naps when we get to heaven. Amen. You'll go home today and eat a big lunch and fall down in the recliner and slobber for about an hour. And then come back to church, I hope. Amen. But that's what we do. We won't be none of that when we get to heaven. And they, they all, that, and he says in verse 26, And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. But I like 27. Listen, this is God's promise to us, church. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh an abomination, or whatsoever shall work at an abomination. And I'm telling you, it's all the way around us right now. You and I are seeing it every day right in front of our eye. You can't turn a TV on. You can't go to the store. You can't go to a restaurant. You can't just walk uh, down to a place of vacation and enjoy a vacation with your family. Once you ain't surrounded with abomination. Or maketh. A lie, the Bible says. He says, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. <laughs> these are the only ones. 
that are going to enter that city. Now, I'm not done real good explaining things this morning the best I can. But the Lord told me when I got the, got thinking about this message, praying about this message, He said, it's time for you to go back to your roots and explain some things. And that's why I'm here this morning to tell you that Jesus loves you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son so He could come and make a way that you wouldn't have to die and go to hell. And He said, I'll go and prepare a place, come back and get you all, and it won't be like nothing you've ever seen in your life. It'll be wonderful. All I ask is for you to give me your heart. What do I got to do to get to this place called heaven? Just got to give me your heart. Let's give up the world. There's the problem. We're too attached to the world. The Bible says in Matthew 6 and 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Listen, Christian friend, he wants you to be happy. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to have things in life. But he wants you to come out from among the world and not do those things of the world and walk with him and love him so people can see your light. And you could tell them about this place we're headed to. It almost don't sound real. It almost sounds like a fairy tale. But that book is the truth this morning. I'm giving you what thus saith the word of God. If it's wrote right here, you can take it to the bank. It's the truth. If he said there's a street pure as gold and it's like transparent glass, you can count on it. He said if it's 1,500 miles in every direction, you can count on it. You can take this stuff and live by it and die by it and see it one day after a while. Amen? God loves you this morning. And I want you to get that vision. Ask God to speak to you and show you what this means to you. You ought to be excited this morning. We're living in discouraging times, but it's stuff like this that makes it all worth it. When he calls someday, we're going to give an answer. Every person in this building this morning is going to answer to God. All you, every one of us, And we ain't going to answer as a group. We're going to answer individually. Would you four brothers stand up right there for me just a minute? Stand Stand right in a row. Come on, step out there and stand right in a row. Someday when we get to heaven, these three preachers standing here, who do you think he's going to call first? It ain't the preacher. Every one of us is going to stand there for ourselves, and not another. Brother Pendleton, I'll never answer for a thing you've ever done. Nothing. And and vice versa. We'll stand there for ourselves. Brother Mark, you'll stand there for yourself. And all that matters what we've done with Jesus. Won't matter I'm a pastor, preacher, singer, preacher, construction worker, Christian. It won't matter what we have done. It'll matter if we have Him. It won't matter if Alan's had tons of money and and helped every church in the county. Or or Greg's pastored 30 churches and Mark's wrote 100 songs that's been number one across the world. And Brother Pendleton's preached all across the nations. And I've pastored Vickers. Do you think because of all of that, he's going to say, okay, Brother Pendleton, because you've been all this, step forward. You're coming in first. All you others, what? That's not the way it's going to be. We'll stand there just like this on level ground and look him eye to eye. And all he'll see, I like his shirt he's got on. (laughs) He's looking for the blood. Blood covered is what he's looking for. That's what he's looking for. He's not looking for what he's done. He's looking for the blood. So I wonder this morning, as you look at us, where do you stand? Where do you stand this morning? 
With every head bowed and every eye closed, let's stand our feet this morning.